This is a mechanism of disease map for anemia of chronic disease. I'll be talking about the etiologies, which is essentially the chronic diseases that cause this form of anemia, the pathophysiology of this disease, and the manifestations of anemia of chronic disease. As in all of these flow charts, in all of these mechanism of disease maps, the core concepts are color coded according to this legend up here. And I'll be clearing each of these boxes and talking through each item one by one. So let's get started. The core etiology, the core driving force behind the pathophysiology in anemia of chronic disease is inflammation. In fact, this disease is actually called anemia of inflammation in some of the literature. So that's really the center of what causes this type of anemia. And inflammation causes some large disruptions in your hormones and cytokines throughout the body. The cytokine in particular that's highly relevant here is IL-6. And another hormone that's very relevant is hepcidin. Now what hepcidin does is regulate how the rest of your body sees iron. It's intended to prevent iron overload in the body. And we'll see that as hepcidin gets really, really high, your body is presented less iron and more of that iron goes into stores in the body. And some of that will be reflected in the manifestations in the labs that you see for anemia of chronic disease. But before we get into the many um, downstream effects of this inflammation of this hepcidin and this IL-6, let's talk about the causes of the inflammation. And as the name suggests, anemia of chronic disease can be caused from many chronic diseases. There are first a bunch of diseases that are inflammatory in, uh, in etiology, and these are a lot of rheumatologic things like rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus erythematosus, inflammatory bowel disease, so that's Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, as well as scleroderma and dermatomyositis. Uh, sorry, dermatomyositis. Um, those are all inflammatory diseases that can lead to anemia of chronic disease. Malignancies and neoplasms and cancers can also cause this. Lung cancer, breast cancer, and lymphoma have all been associated with anemia of chronic disease. There are a bunch of infectious or microbial disorders. Um, these are all like chronic infectious things like tuberculosis, bacterial endocarditis, osteomyelitis, which is a bone infection, HIV AIDS, lung abscess, and some of the chronic hepatitis infections like hepatitis B and hepatitis C have all been associated with anemia of chronic disease. And all of these are kind of long-term chronic disorders. It's also possible to get this disease with some more acute insults like sepsis and trauma. And in this case, it's sometimes called anemia of critical illness. So it's actually possible to have an anemia within a week of a trauma or within a week of a person going into septic shock. Um, you can have that hemoglobin drop quite quickly. And in that case, it might be called anemia of critical illness. But the pathophysiology is essentially the same as anemia of chronic disease, which we'll talk about in just a second. So as I was mentioning, the downstream effects of inflammation of high IL-6 and high hepcidin, there's three pathways here, and they all kind of converge on anemia. So let's start with the top. Inflammation causes decreased iron release from the macrophages in the, in the reticuloendothelial system. This is one of the effects of high hepcidin. It also causes a decreased iron absorption in the intestines. So because you're having less iron released to the body and less iron, iron absorbed into the body, the net effect is that your systemic levels of iron are going to be low. And if your systemic levels of iron are going to be low, the body is going to be iron deficient. You're going to have decreased heme synthesis, which means decreased binding of iron to protoporphyrin. Remember, this is the last step in making hemoglobin. And if you don't have iron, you're not able to synthesize these heme molecules. And as I said, decreased hemoglobin production. The middle step in this inflammation pathophysiology is related to EPO. EPO is the hormone that regulates the production of red blood cells. So more EPO means you're making more red cells. So inflammation directly decreases erythropoietin levels. And in addition, it actually decreases your body's response to EPO. Um, EPO is erythropoietin. So not only are you decreasing the hormone that makes red blood cells, but you're decreasing your body's sensitivity to that hormone as well. So of course, the net effect is going to be kind of doubly decreased RBC synthesis. So a big um, decrease in red blood cell production. Lastly, the inflammation also decreases red blood cell survival and lifespan. And when you take all these things together, decreased hemoglobin production, decreased red blood cell synthesis, decreased red blood cell survival, the net effect is that you're just going to have less red blood cells in the body. And that's kind of the definition of anemia.
When you have less red blood cells in the body, you'll have decreased oxygen carrying capacity and decreased delivery of oxygen to the tissues. And all of the manifestations of anemia of chronic disease come out of these items right here. So let's go to the manifestations now. When you have decreased hemoglobin production, you'll have pale conjunctiva and pallor. The patient might not have the color in their face that you're used to seeing. This decreased oxygen carrying capacity can lead to dyspnea or shortness of breath, lethargy and fatigue, some of the non-specific symptoms of anemia. And the labs of anemia of chronic disease are also relevant. So of course you'll have your decreased hemoglobin, your decreased hematocrit. What's unique about anemia of chronic disease is the high ferritin levels on your iron studies. Now ferritin is a form of iron that's stored for later use. And remember that hepcidin is what regulates the storage of iron. It kind of hides it from the rest of your body. So in, in anemia of chronic disease, you'll have high hepcidin causing a high ferritin count. And your body is kind of starved for iron because your body is also keeping it stored separately and not using it to make red blood cells. So your iron levels are going to be low, your iron saturation is going to be low, your total iron binding capacity will be low, and your reticulocyte count, which is a precursor to red blood cells, will also be low. So your body will actually be making less red blood cells um, and have less circulating iron, but have some iron stored in the form of ferritin. Um, it's almost like your body is hiding iron from the, uh, from the red blood cells. And it's all induced by this inflammation, these cytokines like IL-6 and hepcidin. But that's about it. Otherwise, these manifestations, um, besides the labs, are pretty generic for all types of anemia. So really, it's this ferritin increase that's your differentiating factor, as well as the patient may be having some chronic disease or some acute insult, as we discussed here. That's it for this flowchart. I hope this mechanism of disease map was helpful, and thank you for listening.